See website for details on our two-month subscription offer. Ladies, lose weight, improve your health, and eat great with Nutrisystem. Get our new premium meals with up to 30 grams of protein. They're big and filling and taste delicious. Plus, try our new restaurant faves that taste like your favorite restaurant, portioned with half the calories. Beef and bean burritos, toasted ravioli, sesame beef and broccoli. Easy to prepare and made in minutes. The secret? Advanced nutritional science that helps keep your blood sugar levels steady and you losing weight. With Nutrisystem, you get your breakfasts, lunches, dinners, and snacks all delivered right to your door. Just go to Nutrisystem.com slash meals right now and get 50% off. You heard me right. Go to Nutrisystem.com slash meals right now and get 50% off all plans. Don't wait. This special offer will not last long. Just go to Nutrisystem.com slash meals right now and get 50% off. Go to Nutrisystem.com slash meals. Hey, what's up, family? Before we get into this episode, I originally was going to drop this episode after the new year, but I realized how important it was to talk about this right before the new year and right before signups. Um, if you've been following me on my personal page, I've been doing E2M Fitness, and it is a Facebook-based fitness group that uh, produce phenomenal results. I've lost 60 pounds. My wife has lost 40 pounds. If you are interested in signing up for E2M, uh, please shoot me a message uh, on Instagram and Twitter. My name is Dwayne21. Uh, also on Facebook, you can shoot me an inbox there as well. I would love to tell you more about it. Uh, so you can go into 2022 with the fitness plan that actually works. Uh, I can give you all the details offline. So hit me up there. And uh, today's interview is a, uh, a pastor that is uh, in the program. I actually met him through the program. So we're going to make reference to that a lot. And I just want to give you the inside. Make sure you sign up for E2M. If you do, hit me up. Put my name down as a reference. And uh, I would love to tell you more about it. Again, uh, just hit me any of those spaces. You can email me at the bar podcast, the number 21 at gmail.com or at Dwayne 21, Instagram, Twitter, inbox me, DM me. I will respond. Y'all enjoy the show. Yo, welcome to the bar. Come on and pull up a seat and open up your Bible. What a wonderful feast. The living bread and we're discussing what it means for the streets, the inner cities and the burbs and every person we meet. This is where we challenge worldviews that we hear from world news. In light of the scripture, we are here to serve you. We're your source for resources to help you on your way as you battle mean forces. This is for the people who can see the importance of sound theology and the scripture that support it. And this is for the truth lovers, biblically reforming, preaching Christ to the nations. Yeah, welcome to the modern the reformation yeah the bar biblical and reformed welcome everybody to the bar it's your boy Dwayne and building right back in here another tuesday super excited as always be coming through your speakers through your earbuds where you listen to the bar we're grateful that you're listening and i love to start every show the same way thanking the listeners thank you guys for listening to the bar we are going into or probably by the time you hear this episode we're in 2022 and uh we are in an uh-oh we're in another year and uh by god's grace man we've been doing this uh march would make six years and i just want to thank you guys for rocking with me this long and to all the newcomers thank you guys for uh tuning into the bar and sharing the bar and like i do every week i bring you an awesome guest this awesome guest uh actually we are part of a a, a, a secret order <laughs> we're, we're part of a, a, a secret group uh no it's not secret uh those that follow me on personal uh pages i am in a fitness group called e2m and uh we actually connected there but i have on none other than my brother philip how you doing man man i am doing good man thanks for having me i appreciate it yeah it, it used to be, you know, so when I joined E2M, there were 3,000 people in it. Mm. It was like the secret order. And now there's like 76,000 people. It's hard and to it's, keep that secret. You right? can't even walk around the grocery store. You know, <laughs> you better have better have asparagus in your cart at the grocery store. Because if not, you're going to get busted. <laughs> I love it. I love it, man. I love it. So, man, uh, not only uh, are you in E2M, uh, you also uh, in the ministry and we connected when you saw probably one of my many reform shirts I'm always uh, wearing the banner and uh, that's how we connected so I want to give you an opportunity to introduce yourself to my listeners share anything you like to share personal professional you got the floor to do that right here 
Yeah, man, sure. Well, guys, yeah, as he said, my name's Philip. I uh, I'm a bivocational Anglican priest, and so I work full time for a little firm called Pinnacle Financial Partners. I work in their commercial banking team, but the ministry that I've been called to and I've been a part of now for three years, I've been in ordained ministry for for four years, six years. And so, but I recently, about three years ago, joined the clergy team over at St. Andrew's Park Circle, which if you're not familiar with South Carolina, that's North Charleston, South Carolina. So that's where I am and really enjoy being a part of their clergy team there. I'm the associate pastor and my colleague Dave and myself lead the people there. Uh, and so I've been doing that now for three years. Uh, previous to that, planted a church in Somerville, pastored that for almost four years. We folded in with St. Andrews three years ago. Um, previous to that was in youth ministry. And so did youth ministry for almost 10 years before going into the pastor world. So ministry has been my entire life, uh, but went into bivocational ministry seven years ago in May, which is really hard to believe and have been doing bivocational ministry and love the opportunity to spend time getting people to see that there's no longer a divide between secular and sacred, that we can have them together. Mm. And so that's been a really Mm. big passion of mine. Puritans were huge on that. Puritans were big on the calling of the, the normal lay person to go into the world as ministers in jobs as teachers, personal trainers, accountants, bankers. And so I live that life every day. I'm married to Carrie. Uh, we've been married now for, we're at that point to where we've been married long enough that I've got to think about it a little nice. harder than normal. <laughs> um, and so we're going up on, I believe, 12 years. Okay. We'll be coming up, no, 12 years, 13 years, 22. So we'll be coming up on 13 years of marriage. Two amazing kids, Sanders, my son, who's 11, Allie, my little girl, who is seven. And man, we are full speed ahead. He said we're in E2M. I can't not be a part of something and share my story of E2M. My wife and I joined that in July 2020, lost over 100 pounds between the two of us. It's changed our life. Uh, we love E2M, and it's given us connections like the one I've made here. So, man, that's that's me really fast in a nutshell. I've lived in Somerville, South Carolina my entire life. So Nice, nice. No, I, I appreciate that. Um, and, and, and love, love the vocational part. We're going to, we're going to go back to that part. Uh, definitely want to, uh, speak to that. Um, and definitely big shout out to E2M, man. Uh, congratulations to you and your wife doing that. So, you know, you make me feel old when you say, you know, I've uh, been married long enough to have to think about it. Cause 2022, it'll be 14 for me and my wife. And I'm like, well, I, I think I got it down pretty good. <laughs> good, good. Yeah, man. Good for you. I, I need to do a better job. Down, so. <laughs> no, that's super dope. Super dope, man. So, um, you know, I always joke when I have uh, people that are in the ministry that are in the South and say, hey, the South is probably the hardest place to evangelize because everybody's already saved. Um, kind of talk about your experience, uh, you know, you know, being in Somerville, you know, ministry background, going into ministry to call and then just kind of, you know, even with the church plant, because there's a lot of church planters that listen. Let's kind of walk through uh, that experience and, and, and some things that you learned along the way, as well as, you know, some some things that some of my listeners can apply. Yeah, man, for sure. Yeah, no, no doubt. I mean, we definitely in the South, there's there's a church in every corner. I live in Charleston, South Carolina. We're called the Holy City. Right. Mm-hmm. And that's just because. You know, the foundations of where we came from. We have some of the oldest churches in America, about 30 minutes from where I sit. A couple of them are Anglican churches. I actually grew up Southern Baptist, so I've only been in the Anglican church since 2007, 8. Mm. I got it called and accepted a position in the end of 2007 and started in 2008. And so I've only been in the Anglican church, you know, for now going on 14, almost 14 years. And, you know, my wife grew up Anglican, so she's a cradle Anglican, but mm-hmm. I grew up Southern Baptist. And, mm you know, very much understand that very Southern evangelical world. We won't run down that path of confession, but I understand it very well because I grew up in it. And, um, you know, it's it's one of those things where in the South, it's more about, well, we go to church on Sunday, yep. you know, and that's kind of how people live their life. And there's not anything wrong with that, but it's a very cultural moment, mm-hmm. um, you know. And so we have found that there's people out there, at least from an Anglican perspective, that are running the wide range of they grew up in church here in the South and maybe have had some some baggage that they've carried and have kind of left and then found their way back. We've got some people that have just left that altogether and found Anglicanism. And then we've got um, people that were unbelievers and have found us. And I think what 
what's key to us in that is a, I don't want to say remedy, but maybe a counter to it is just the historical Christianity aspect. You know, as Anglicans, as Reformed Anglicans, you know, we embrace historical Christianity. We believe that we've been given a, a, a Christianity that has been passed on from first century, you know, when Jesus passed it on to his disciples and it was established there by by Peter in, um, in when it was established by Paul and Peter and those guys in Acts and how it was just sent on from there, right? And so we believe that we've been given this historical Christianity that we are to live into and to carry forward. And we have found that that has provided some structure in the life of chaos that mm-hmm. we often find ourselves in. You know, we're liturgical, you know, and so our services are by nature very structured. And we are just finding that that's offering something different for people to look at a historical Christianity that also is not just locally to a Southern context here in North Charleston, South Carolina, but also that has a global aspect, right? So another part of Anglicanism is we're global. You know, we, we have a global Anglican communion. And so if I were to cross the big blue ocean and go to a, a church in England, or maybe where you're seeing a really big rise, you know, in, in Africa, if I were to walk into one of those churches, it would have similar feelings and smells and words that I would often do here in North Charleston on a Sunday morning. And so really what we're seeing is it's breaking people out of that Southern cultural Christian context Mm. and attaching them to historical Christianity. That's also a worldwide Christianity and realizing that we've got brothers and sisters of all shapes, sizes, colors, you know, background nationalities that are worshiping the exact same way we are. And so it really helps break down those walls and makes us realize that we're something, we're part of something bigger. Nice. I love that. Love that. So uh, when you did the church plant, that was Anglican as well, I'm, I'm assuming? Yeah, yeah, man. So we planted an Anglican church here in Somerville, South Carolina, back in, let's see, my, my little girl was born seven years ago, and we launched services, you know, two weeks after she was born. And so that was, yeah, we launched eight years ago and then went to full-time weekly services um, not too long after that, so seven years ago. And we did that for for about four years, and the Lord did some great work. Uh, but back to the South, right? We are there's churches everywhere, and you know where we were in Somerville. There was another Anglican church down the street. I loved them dearly, great brothers and sisters. We had a hard time gaining a lot of traction. Um, lost some key families, and then one night, uh, my colleague and I, Dave, we were spending time with each other. And once a month, him and I would get together for five years. We were pastors to each other. We pastored each other. He was planting an Anglican church 20 minutes from me, and the Lord, um, through good conversation and through direction and Holy Spirit leading, brought our churches together. And so I went and joined the clergy team at St. Andrews back in 2018. Nice, nice. So kind of to dig into that a little bit, um, you know, you you talk about that conversation and bringing the church together because there's maybe somebody that's kind of looking at that or looking into that, what are some things that, that you experienced that, you know, maybe hindsight you would have did different or, you know, did you feel good about everything or what, what are some little details uh, in that process that you experienced that somebody might benefit from? Yeah, man. Hey, that's, that's a great question. And here's why we always hear about the success of church planning. We Mm -hmm. don't often hear about the struggles of church planning right. and where I do not at all consider ourselves a failed church plant because of the stories of redemption that came out of that, the people that were baptized, the people that found Jesus, you know, there were parts of me in those days. And when we were really struggling and trying to figure out what was next. And as the Lord was starting to maybe move us into a new season, man, there were many times I felt like a failure. I felt mm-hmm. like I'm just another statistic, right? We, we hear statistics. You pick up a church plant book. It starts off with the grim statistics of how many churches make it in three years, five years. You know, there's benchmarks that we need to hit. And if you haven't hit this benchmark by year five, the success rate drops by another 20%. You know? oh. And so I walked through these hey. moments of that's kind of how I felt. Like I maybe was a uh-huh. failure, but what I had to realize, and I realized through great counsel and mentors, well, we, we is um, man, when the Lord in. works like, and the gospel he, moves, he there is in. no such thing as failure. Yeah, and we definitely experienced that. And so what I learned from that, those years yeah, of planting a church was pay. the very first thing that I tell church planners that you call are. me and want to hang out with me is I tell them, do not do this by yourself. That was one thing that was a really hard struggle for me. Yeah, I had some some bought in lay people. I had some core members. I I had people that loved what we did and 
They bought the vision of where God was leading us. And part of the reason why we kind of went through a shift is because some of those families just moved away. It's mm. not, not, not against their doing. They were called to other parts of the United States and have moved out. And so that was part of the reason we kind of had what we had going on. But what I really realized is I didn't have that number two that I could lead on. I didn't mm -hmm. spend time doing the leadership development with key leaders to have somebody that's pulling rope with me. You know, so we talk about E2M, right? E2M is successful because you're not pulling the rope by yourself. Right. You've got a team of 72,000 plus people that are helping you pull the rope. When I'm up in the morning at 5.30 in my gym working out at my garage, I know that I'm going to jump on the group and I'm going to see Dwayne. He's done his workout. He was up at 4.30 in the gym, right? <laughs> That's the stuff that pushes us right. because it's people pulling rope. It's people running after the vision mm -hmm. that you have to be healthy. It's, it's the exact same thing in church planning. I tell people, don't go do it by yourself. Right. Digging ditches mm. is a lot more fun with somebody else there with you, and it's a lot easier. And so what Dave and I found – is you know the lord really brought us together because we were two guys in some ways doing it by ourselves, and the lord called me in to offer them something that their church actually had been praying for but they couldn't do because they can't go out and hire a, a full-time right. associate and so here's this guy <laughs> who's bivocational and they can bring me in and the lord answered prayer through that and so that's what i really learned man is have a number two that's have amazing. somebody that buys into that vision be it a, a, a preacher a worship leader, somebody taking care of youth and children. It doesn't matter what role they fill. Mm -hmm. um, just have a number two somebody can lean on. And then have a pastor. Mm -hmm. Pastors need pastors. And, man, it's, this, this conversation is probably a reality for a lot of people right now post-COVID, right? For sure. it's, it's something that a lot of churches are facing and looking at. How do we survive? Uh, we bring churches together. We had a church not too far up the street here. It's like three churches just came together. Uh, one, just for survival, mm -hmm. but two, for gospel-centered mission. And so I, I have a feeling these are conversations that are going to be happening, and those need to happen in the realization of pastors. Uh, so pastor, have a pastor. I had a pastor. We worked through that together, and that really helped me realize, man, I wasn't a failure at all. People found Jesus. They heard Jesus. They saw Jesus. And that's why we do what we do, whether it's for one or 1,000. And so, man, I'm, I'm blessed on that time. And what I've learned through that and being able to be a part of what God called me to in Somerville, and now what we get to do in North Charleston. Yeah, no, that's that's beautiful. I love that, and I think that is just God ordained timing. Because, um, like you said, post COVID, you know what we're going through. Uh, people trying to figure out what's what um, is really important uh, that we band together, you know, um, and 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 become uh, stronger together. That that is a really really good point. I appreciate you touching on that. Um, so before the break, um, right now, you know, uh, you talk about, you know, vo by vocational and, and, and all of that. And, and you kind of touched on it in the beginning uh, for uh, those young seminary guys that are, you know, itching to come out and, and be full time. Tell some of the advantages and some of the perks of not being full time, but being by vocational before we go to the break. Yeah, man. So perks and advantages, I, I, you know, the one of the easiest, I guess, out the gate is the financial advantage. You know, it's in a world, you know, that we're raising money is just tough mm -hmm. you know, for nonprofits in general, but also for churches. You know, there's a little bit more freedom for me not having to worry about the financial means for my family. Mm. But the church I, I serve and work with, man, they take such good care of me and my family. And we're honored to be a part of what they do. But it's nice to know that, especially when I went to plant that church, those early days in mm -hmm. Trinity Somerville, that, man, I don't have to worry about what's in the offering plate every Sunday. If right. my family's going to eat the next week or things like that, you know, and so it was really helpful to kind of release that financial burden and stress. You know, some other perks is, man, I am, I'm in the mission field every single day. Mm -hmm. You know, when you, when you're a pastor, the, the, we often lock ourselves in the four walls of our offices and write that off that we're doing gospel ministry. And I'm not trying to say, I don't want a vocational pastor who's listening to this say, Oh, here goes another bivocational guy attacking how I do stuff. That's right. not at all what I'm saying, but I do think we have to remember where our mission field is. I think we do have to remember where we need to be called. And so, um, as, as a banker, Man, I am in people's highs and lows. There is mm -hmm. nothing more exposing than finances. And so I get to see in everyday life where we need to be pressing in. 
as, as people, where as a pastor, I can really help and aid. And then I've also actually had the opportunity to walk clients and, and colleagues through some pretty heavy stuff and some pretty dark stuff that I don't know if I'd ever got the opportunity to do that if I was sitting in the the walls of my office at a church, you know? Right. Yeah, I'll, people come from me to pastoral counseling, but to be out here walking among everybody and a lot of people who are not attending church, it's been an interesting moment. Um, it's been a cultural moment for me to step into and almost be considered as a pastor by a lot of people that I know that don't even darken the doors of churches. Wow, that's awesome. That is awesome. That, really good to hear. I appreciate that. All right, brother. So right here, we're going to take a quick break and we'll be right. How was school? What'd you learn today? Revive your child's passion for learning with OutSchool. OutSchool offers live, affordable, online, interactive classes for kids pre-K through high school. With a huge variety of fun, interesting, and educational subjects like video game design, learning to play the ukulele, and how to make animated movies. Your child will love discovering a new passion and making new friends. To save $15 on your child's first class, go to outschool.com slash learn and use code learn. Shop Mattress Firm's year-end sale and put an end to junk sleep. Save up to $500 when you get a king bed for the price of a queen or queen for a twin. Plus, get a free adjustable base with qualifying Sealy purchase up to a $4.99 value. Or shop top-selling brands and get up to 50% off select mattresses, like Sealy Twin Mattresses starting at $224.99 or Serta Twin Mattresses at $349.99. And shop with confidence thanks to our low-price guarantee. Only at Mattress Firm. Restrictions apply. See store for details. Back. Thankful Homemaker is a blog and podcast created to be an encouragement and blessing to each other in the role God has called us to as women. Thankful Homemaker provides truth filled, gospel driven encouragement to homemakers who, amid their ordinary days, desire to honor and glorify God in all things. Come visit thankfulhomemaker.com for the latest articles and podcasts. You can also subscribe to the podcast on iTunes, Google Play, or on your favorite podcast catcher. So ladies, pop in your headphones as you're doing dishes, cooking dinner, or folding laundry, and sit with me, host Marcy Farrell, as we chat together on how God's Word impacts everything we do as Christian women. All right, we're back in here with my brother Phil, man, and so this is the part of the podcast where i ask the bar signature questions these are the three questions i ask all of my guests so the first signature bar question is what kind of music do you listen to oh man <laughs> it depends on the day so man i'm a big frank sinatra guy nice you know and so Old blue eyes. anything in that frank sinatra ella fitzgerald you know, if you want to get a little contemporary, the King of Christmas, Michael Buble, mm. you know, that's kind of where I'm sitting right now, you know, in my office. You know, so I, I love listening to Frank or some kind of instrumental jazz Christmas music this time of year, mm -hmm. especially when I'm working away. You know, there's there's times when I run, you know, if if I'm into listening to music, I typically listen to podcasts when I run. OK, but if I'm into listening to music, it's probably going to be in that kind of older country genre of like Alabama and Garth Brooks mm -hmm. and those guys. Um, and then there's, there's sometimes man where you got to get that, that music that gets your heart pumping mm -hmm. and put, put the headphones on and, and just get work done. And so sometimes I just like, you know, some, some good music that's just got some high pump to it, gets me working, gets me moving. And so it just depends. It's, it's all over the place. Nice. Nice. Now that's a good list. That's a good list. All right. Next signature bar question is what book or books are you currently reading? Yeah, so I've been working through um, several books. So I finished seminary back in May, and I've been going through a period of I'm going to read what I want to read instead of somebody telling me what to read. Mm. Some of that has mm. selfishly included not reading at all. Uh, and so it's been great not to do that. But one book I've been reading right now, it's called Advent, and it's by Fleming Rutledge. And it's been a, it's been a great book to listen to and to read, and I've really enjoyed kind of working through that. So that's one of the books I'm working through right now. And then next up, I've got a book that's part of a series in our Anglican world called Reformation Worship. And so I'm really looking forward to reading that. So that's next up on the list. Nice, nice. All right. So you already kind of mentioned this um, last signature bar question is what podcasts or sermons do you listen to? Man, so... If you're like most of us that grew up in the age of Mark Driscoll, <laughs> I've been listening to 
the Christianity Today podcast uh-huh. uh, pretty heavily when I run. And so that's been one that, that I've been listening to. Of course, recently picked up some of the stuff that Barr's doing. Uh, nice. There's another couple guys out there. Uh, it's called Doctrine and Devotion. It's yep. another one that I enjoy jumping in and listening to. Those guys are crazy. And then in the leadership world, I would be remiss if I didn't mention um, two people. One is a podcast called Dad's Kitchen. Mm. Um, and so it's a buddy of mine, him and his, his a friend of his get together. And they talk about what it is to dads to cook. It's a hobby of mine. Nice. And so he talks about what it is to reclaim the kitchen for, for families. And that's a great podcast. And then finally, I guess another one that I'm listening to, it's called Under Fire, and it's by a digital advocacy campaign group that does politics, and they talk about crisis management, you know, and cancel culture, which I, I just find fascinating in today's world. So, um, I, I, again, like my music, it's a wide array of things. Gotcha. Yeah, I'm I'm subscribing to Dad's Kitchen right now. That you got my, <laughs> I gotta check this. That's out. a good one, man. <laughs> gotta check it out. Good deal, brother. Well, listen, first again, thank you for taking time out of your schedule. Jump on my show. Very, very grateful for that. Um, And I always kind of like to close it out by giving an opportunity to kind of leave us with any words of encouragement, anything you want to say or, or, you know, how people can follow you on social medias. If you do all that kind of stuff, you got space to do that. Yeah. Yeah, man. Well, hey, you know, I'm, I'm out there on social media. You know, if you want to connect, you know, typically most of my stuff's under Philip R. Wilson. We'd love to connect with some people. You know, our church is out there, St. Andrews Park Circle. You know, we're pushing stuff here and there. But I, I think my biggest encouragement, and it's really just in the anticipatory sense of the season, right? So as we're doing this right now, it is December 22nd. Christmas is coming. We're in the middle of uh, ending Advent and going into Christmas. And you, Dwayne mentioned that this will probably come out after the first of the year. And my encouragement would be it would not – would not lose the beauty of Advent tension of the already and not yet Mm. Uh, live into that every day. We're so quick when Christmas is here and Christmas is over just to kind of move on to new year, new goals, new things. That's hugely important. Right. But I would say as Christians, man, we really need to be living into this Advent tension of remembering what we're a part of, who we're secured by, what Jesus has done for us, because who knows what's going on right now. First of the year, COVID still maybe kicking off after holidays. There's a lot of discouragement out there. We need to rest secure that we know the end of the story. We know we have a king that has conquered death for us. And then finally, in the spirit of a new year, take care of yourself. Man, look look out for your health. That's that's the best way you can stay healthy is taking care of number one. And man, if you're a pastor listening to this, the first place you need to start outside of getting right and making sure your spiritual life is where it needs to be is your physical health. Mm. Um, I could do a whole other 30 minutes with Dwayne on just pastor health. <laughs> we'll put that and, on the sidebar. That's my other podcast. That's my fitness we'll podcast. That we'll, we'll put that on yeah, the sidebar. All right. We'll put that on the sidebar because I, I am a huge advocate for pastoral health uh, yes. when it comes to our physical being. Uh, I really think that's one of the most important things we can do to be a better pastor, father, mother, whatever you are. Um, in that world so man yeah that would be the last couple of things i would say awesome brother awesome awesome and i'm i'm dead serious about the sidebar i'll send you a link for that and we'll schedule that as well <laughs> 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 let's do it but man again thank you yeah. man for coming on to the bar podcast listeners thank you guys for tuning in to the bar podcast make sure you go to the barpodcast.com check out all the latest episodes also go to that tab that says bar podcast network check out all the podcasts in the network and go to the bargear.com to pick you up some bar gear and until next time you guys god bless and we
You coming to bed, hon? Yep, honey, I'll be right there. Just gotta turn out the light. Ow! 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 Ah! Ah! Some things never change. Like your kids always leaving tiny toys on the floor for you to step on. And Geico saving folks lots of money on their car insurance. Sweetie, I think I left the downstairs light on. P please don't make me go. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more.